welcome back to Harbor Unbox. Today we are going to review the sub $200 US GPU market and see how it compares to what you were getting just a few years ago. Recently I did this for the $400 price range and found while AMD offers quite a solid upgrade over past $400 products with the 5700 XT, which beat the GTX 1070 by around 50% on average, the RX 2060 Super was far less impressive, offering just a 35% performance boost. Where we were really hoping to see value added was the sub $200 market and the expectation in late 2019 was that AMD would do just that with their 5500 XT. But despite offering solid performance relative to Nvidia's GTX 1650, the 5500 XT's pricing was a massive letdown. AMD arrived to the party late and they tried to charge a small premium, which really did nothing to improve the value of this segment. And it really just meant that the 5500 XT wasn't worth buying. Worse still, the 5500 XT was limited to PCIe 8x operation, which means you only get the equivalent to PCIe 3.0x16 bandwidth when using a PCIe 4.0 enabled system, and for that right now, you require an X570 motherboard. After the disappointing 5500 XT release, I thought we could have a look at how the sub $200 US market has progressed over the last four years or so. And this means for comparison, we have the Radeon R9 370X and the GeForce GTX 950, along with the slightly newer Radeon RX 470 and GeForce GTX 1050 Ti. The Radeon R9 370X was released back in August of 2015 for $180 US, and it was a third generation refresh. Previously refreshed in late 2013 is the R9 270 and 270X for $180 and $200 respectively. And all these first gen GCN parts originated from the Radeon HD 7870 GHz edition, released way back in 2012 for $350 US. The Radeon RX 470, that was released back in August of 2016 for $180 US, and it too was refreshed, this time as the RX 570 in mid-2017 for $170 US. As for the green team, the GeForce GTX 950 was released back in late 2015 for $160. It wasn't a refresh, and it didn't actually end up getting refreshed, so that was a rare occurrence back then. And then following it in late 2016 was the GTX 1050 Ti for $140 US. After that, another three years would go by before a replacement would arrive, and that replacement was the GTX 1650 for $150, which was effectively replaced by the 1650 Super at just $160 in the very same year. So that's the history. Let's get into the testing. All GPUs have been tested in our Core i9 1900K test system overclocked to 5 GHz using the latest drivers and game versions available at the time of testing. Also, out of curiosity, I've included the 2013 Tomb Raider reboot to see how the GPUs compare in this older title. So we have a few graphs to go over. Let's get into it. First up, we have Battlefield 5, and here the 370X and 950R are baseline, both averaging 35 FPS. The 1050 Ti, which wasn't really the most exciting product, offered a 37% performance boost, which is much more than the 22% boost the 1650 offers the 1050 Ti. You can see why we were so down on the original GTX 1650. Within the same year, the 1650 Super was released and it was 67% faster than the GTX 1050 Ti. So this is obviously what the 1650 should have been from the get-go. As for AMD, we see that they managed a massive 103% performance boost from the 370X to the RX 470, and the 470's MSRP was also lowered by $10. The RX 570 refresh though, that was a lot less exciting. Here we're looking at a mere 6% performance boost. Then from the 570 to the 5500 XT, a further 11%. Not exactly inspiring stuff here from the red team. Basically, it looks like they overachieved with the 470, and it's come back to bite them. This time when testing with Call of Duty Modern Warfare, we see a solid 36% boost for the 1050 Ti over the 950, and then a rather massive 43% jump up to the GTX 1650. That said, the GTX 1650 Super was almost 50% faster than the vanilla 1650, and that meant it was a whopping 113% faster than the GTX 1050 Ti. That said, comparing the GTX 1650 Super to the GTX 1050 Ti, that can be a little bit misleading, as the Pascal GPU wasn't exactly the best value option at the time. Realistically, the RX 470 was probably the more desirable product in 2016, and if we use that for comparison, it means that the 1650 Super is just 36% faster, so yeah, not a great result that. But worse still, in this title, the 5500 XT was just 16% faster than the RX 470. 
The GTX 950 is the best of the 2015 GPUs in F1 2019, but even so, the RX 470 was a whopping 106% faster. And this means when going from the RX 470 to the 5500 XT, you're looking at just a 16% improvement in performance. That's pretty miserable after all these years. Remember, the RX 470 was released at just $180 US, while the 4GB 5500 XT costs $170 US. So again, that's just horrible value after four years. The Far Cry New Dawn results are interesting. Here the GTX 1050 Ti was just 14% faster than the GTX 950, while the 1650 was 23% faster than the 1050 Ti. The almost 70% jump in performance from the GTX 1050 Ti to the 1650 Super is very impressive, but again, it's really the RX 470 that we should be using for comparison here, and the 1650 Super is just 21% faster, while the 5500 XT really isn't much better. Testing with Gears 5 shows a 76% performance boost for the GTX 950 to the RX 470, and that's obviously a significant performance uplift. But from the 470 to the 5500 XT, we're looking at less than a 30% performance increase. Again, that's pretty poor progress. Again, we see a 76% boost going from the GTX 950 to the RX 470. This time we're testing with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, but just a 28% boost from the 470 to the 1650 Super. These results also prove just how terrible the GTX 1650 was, or is. Here it's just 15% faster than the GTX 1050 Ti, which means it's done in by the RX 470. Unlike the other titles tested, Metro Exodus was benchmarked using the ultra quality settings, and this seems to cripple the newer GeForce GPUs, such as the GTX 1050 Ti, the 1650, and the 1650 Super. The 1650 Super is only able to match the RX 470, but even so, the 5500 XT was still just 17% faster than the RX 470, so another poor result for the current sub $200 US GPUs. The Rainbow Six results look much like many of the other titles we've already looked at. Here the 1650 Super does quite well thanks to the improvements made by the Turing architecture, but even so, it's still slower than the RX 470, and that meant the 1650 Super and 5500 XT were only between 20 to 30% faster than the RX 470. World of Tanks is an interesting game to include because it's not very heavy on VRAM usage, so it is a good title for comparing the older 2GB models. Here the GTX 1050Ti was 29% faster than the GTX 950, while the original GTX 1650 was just 11% faster than the 1050Ti. So a horrible result for the Turing-based GPU. Still, while the RX 470 was 70% faster than the R9 370X, the 5500 XT was just 33% faster than the RX 470. Moving on, we're using the high quality preset in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and this is pretty hard for the two gigabyte models to deal with. And as a result, the GTX 1050 Ti was 46% faster than the 370X and 64% faster than the GTX 950. The GTX 1650 though was just 27% faster than the GTX 1050 Ti, and worse still, only matched the RX 470. Meanwhile, the 5500 XT was just 31% faster than the RX 470. I decided to retest Assassin's Creed Odyssey using the low quality preset, which is the lowest graphics preset the game has to offer. This time, the 1050Ti was just 29% faster than the GTX 950, and then the margin from the 1050Ti to the 1650 was similar, but this time the Turing GPU offered a 24% performance boost. The 5500XT was still just 31% faster than the RX 470, but interestingly, the 1650 Super does much better, and now it is 52% faster than the 470. Finally, the last game tested is 2013's Tomb Raider Reboot, and here I'm using the ultra quality preset. The 1050Ti was 28% faster than the 2015 GPUs, or at least the GPUs that were released in late 2015, while the RX 470 was 84% faster. Meanwhile, the GTX 1650 again proves why it's a crap product and was so heavily criticised upon release. We also see that the 5500 XT is just 24% faster than the RX 470, though the 1650 Super was 46% faster. I'm not too concerned with power consumption for this comparison, but I know there will be some viewers who are interested in seeing this data, so here it is. Please feel free to pause the video if you want a closer look. Okay, so for those of you looking at spending less than $200 on your graphics card, maybe you're upgrading for something like an RX 470, I think it's fair to say the latest offerings are super disappointing. But anyway, before we get too much into that, let's just wrap up the testing by looking at an 11 game average for all the modern titles tested. 
Here's the problem. The Radeon RX 470 was 90% faster on average when compared to the 2015 models, the GTX 950 and R9 370X. What this means is in a 12 month period, the $160 to $180 price point received a massive 90% performance boost. That's really quite incredible. If you ignore the RX 470 and look at the GTX 1050 Ti, we see a much more mild 33% boost over the GTX 950, but in the 1050 Ti's defense, it did come in at a lower MSRP than all of the other products tested here. Still, I'd say the jump from the GTX 950 to the 1050 Ti was pretty weak. That said, the jump from the 1050 Ti to the 1650 was even weaker. The Turing-based GPU was just 25% faster and shockingly 12% slower than the RX 470. The GTX 1650 Super did help point things in the right direction, but even so, it's just 23% faster than the RX 470. And the same goes for the more recently released 5500 XT. Again, if we ignore the RX 470, the 5500 XT and 1650 Super are 75% faster than the GTX 1050 Ti, which is a huge performance gain, though they do cost about $20 to $30 US more. So here's a look at the cost per frame data comparing the release MSRP. So I can't stress this enough, it's not the current market value. But this graph really is telling. Looking at the lighter blue bar graph, so the, the cost per frame bars, the GTX 950, which was the better value option in late 2015, that came in at a cost of $4.10 per frame based on the current up-to-date data. The GTX 1050 Ti offered a pretty substantial 34% reduction in cost per frame, while the RX 470 was very disruptive at a 41% discount per frame. Then years later, the 1650 comes in offering just a 5% discount over the 470, which is irrelevant given that it was competing with the 570, which at MSRP is already 6% cheaper per frame. But of course the 570 these days are much cheaper than the $170 US MSRP. The 5500 XT is 23% cheaper than the RX 470 per frame and just 14% cheaper than the RX 570. Again, this is when comparing the RX 570 at the MSRP not the current market price. Point is, when comparing the launch prices, the 5500 XT is at best offering a 23% discount over the RX 470, three years later, and the 1650 Super is really not much better. Again, even if we ignore the amazingly good value RX 470 and look at the 1050 Ti, the story for modern GPUs really doesn't get much better. The GTX 1050 Ti was 34% cheaper than the GTX 950 per frame, while the 1650 Super is just 35% cheaper. And what's important to note here is that the 1050 Ti was released just a year after the GTX 950. The 1650 Super though, that was released three years after the 1050 Ti. Just lastly, I'd like to address something that always seems to come up, and that is the driver nerfing argument. So I decided to compare the 2013 Tomb Raider results to what we saw in the modern titles. Scaling between the old and newer games looks fairly consistent. The only standout here is the GTX 1650 Super, which did better relative to the 5500 XT in Tomb Raider. Of course, we're comparing just a single old title to an 11 game average for the modern title, so it's not surprising to see a result like this. In fact, I'm actually surprised how similar the scaling is for the most part. The R9 370X and GTX 950, for example, were evenly matched in the modern and old game. And the same goes for the GTX 1050 Ti and 1650. So I can't see any driver nerfing going on here. The stagnation in the sub $200 US GPU segment is real. Uh, there's no 50% performance gains to be seen here. And the RX 470 really does make a mockery of the 1650 Super and 5500 XT. Even in terms of power consumption, they're really not that much better. You're looking at maybe around a 20% increase in performance for the same level of power usage after three years. And ultimately, what gamers really care about are frames. So if you bought an RX 470 for $180 three years ago, you'd be sitting around twiddling your thumbs, waiting for something worthwhile in the sub $200 US market. Short of spending $350 on a Radeon RX 570, you might as well just keep making do with the 470 till something worthwhile comes along. And that's pretty much it. I could make a case for the RX 5700 series, but the 5500 XT and GTX 1650 Super they, they kind of suck. They suck. Uh, there's really no other way to put it. They either need to be priced much closer to $100 US or replaced with faster, more capable products. But as always, let me know what you think 
about this whole situation in the comment section below. And if you'd like to join Tim and myself for our monthly Patreon live stream tomorrow, then you can jump over to our Patreon page and sign up for as little as $1 a month. We also have a few other cool perks, so check those out if you're interested. That's going to do it for this one. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>